I really don't, I really cannot actually, you know, figure out what you're trying to say, but you see, what are you saying is what our ancestors try in vain to make the white settlers understand us. I think um, um, you may, if you can, rewrite something uh, that I can understand. So if, if, if our penal gland is actually activated, we will be able to see beyond uh, the indoctrination of, of the church because the church was able during the time of Council of Nicaea, the church was able to destroy everything that leads us to remember whom we are because we've done it several times. Even the book that the church claims claim it is their book that contradicts every activities of the church the book talks about regeneration, regeneration, which suggests the cycle of rebirth, the cycle of rebirth. So if that book talks about the cycle of rebirth, you will know that it talks about you do not die. You just keep on doing it. It is just like you wake up in the morning, go to your nine to five or go to your, you know, do the same thing you do to make money. Every day you wake up in the morning, you do it the same way. The same time you wake up, the same time you leave your house, the same time you arrive at the office, the same time you do, you do it constantly the same way. So that's the same way that if your body is actually, you know, removed, there is time period of renewal and the cycle of rebirth now i have actually you know understood that a baby that is in the belly does not have a soul in the belly i've been trying to you know relay this type of message but it's not for everyone's understanding because if you just throw it out there, people will be super confused, but people need to understand exactly what is the cycle of rebirth. They need to understand their purpose in life. And if we can transcend beyond this indoctrination, and if we can understand that everything that has been given to us was not given to us accurately, naturally, the way it is presented naturally. Because the malvolent is working against the other of nature at all given, any given point. I don't know what I, if I should call them it or he or she, but they are malvolent. Those that some people in mm -hmm. Africa believe that they are the devil living under the ground. They are all around us. They make decisions for us because we are less creature, creature and then we must be controlled. That's for us not to explore. Imagine in a situation where somebody will tell you you should not ask question. You should not ask God question. How, why can't you ask God question if God exists? If God exists, you, you have to ask question to find out about this God because you cannot continue to believe, ah, I heard about God, therefore I have to believe and not ask question. That's bullshit. There's nothing like that. If you ask question, it means that you want to know more. So we must begin to ask questions, then we will know more. But the indoctrination suggests that you do not question God, you do not ask him questions, you continue to move on. Anything that is presented the way it is presented in the book, carry on with it, no question asked, because you cannot question God. Where is that God? How can he create us? 
and we cannot ask questions. You ask your dad and your parents questions the, the same way this new generation children are curious, they are eager beavers, they want to know more. So that's exactly the same way all of us you know, deserve to know more. Therefore, we will, from doing so, we will know a way to follow. And who is this God? Because there are gods. Indoctrination told us that we, when we write it in capital letter, it, re it represents our God, which is bullshit. It doesn't, doesn't make sense. Capital or small letter, all of them ends with God. But it is important for us to continue to do more research because the indoctrination does not want us to know beyond what they made available by the through the mainstream. The church, the council of Nicaea, the church. Now, when we come back to the concept of hell, uh, which is often the, you know depicted as a place of punishment and purification in many religious tradition. It may be viewed as an illusion of earthly suffering, which, of course, we have actually talked about it. Some interpret hell as symbolically as a state of separation from divine or a consequences of one's action and choices rather than literal place of eternal damnation. Now, look at it. Our, in, our, in our planet Earth, there is a laws. There is laws that governs the planet Earth, not the laws made by malevolent. The laws that governs the planet Earth is a laws that is actually fueled by dark matter. The law which is called the natural laws. It is a law of people call it law of karma. People call it what goes around, comes around. And that is the law. If you unalive someone's child, possibility that your child will be unalive at some point in life where it is going to pain you the same way it pained the person you did it to. It doesn't matter whether it happened in your first life or in your second rebirth. It doesn't matter, but the truth of the matter is that it is going to happen to you. That is the law of nature. You can never cheat it. Now, the laws that we started seeing that goes against the other of nature, which actually started, you know, introducing some certain behavior in human, you know, race. It is the law coming from the malevolent because some of these laws promote the, you know, depopulation. Of course, when we talk about depopulation, it is talking about making sure that we do not live longer, our body do not live longer to assess more information that will help human being to transcend beyond this traditional way or traditional indoctrination through education system or through any other thing. Just like we all know, in our education system, the, 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 the decision was made by a few individuals that believe they are more intelligent than every other person, and they created something like arithmetic, multiplication process they created numbers that can be manipulated then you do not have opinion towards this their creation now you find out you ask yourself does it mean that these people are the only you know intelligent people that exist that they have to create a system that you follow now when you begin to ask questions you find out you found people who actually in is who are initiated within the space or the confine of this in introduction or the confine of this system they will come and make you look stupid because they know their system more than you and they will use the system to intimidate you make you look stupid now why do we you know in our education system, for you to understand the level of indoctrination, it, it is actually bringing to the, you know, you will think about you speaking a different language, but when you go to school, you, you, must, you are forced to speak a particular language, which makes you educated and which makes you non-educated, which the language is mostly grammar. Now think about it. Does it make sense? If it does to you, make it make sense to me because it does not make sense to me. 
if a particular group of people can create something create you know enact a law a system that can never be challenged that means it is a system of indoctrination a system thank you miss j that set us up for failure that's why we must be dependent and serve this malevolent in the want and in the needs of all things and we continue to actually look for things that we cannot get why do we need to work nine to five in order to you know make get food to eat when there is land available all over the place when we can cultivate we can actually plant our own food and eat it instead of depending on someone to introduce seeds like gmos that will not help your body to thrive that is also going to work against the, the vibration of your brain it is going to work against your immune system and some part of your you know organs so in this regard you find out that the indoctrination has destroyed and damaged our sense of reasoning our frontal lobe that we cannot think out of the box to be free and we don't ask question because you don't ask god question otherwise you go to hellfire that's a, that's why you find many people who begin to ask god question uh, they were all unalived including the jesus that we talk about because um when we talk about jesus perspective you know or jesus consciousness we don't understand that Jesus was the only person who began to challenge the, you know, traditional phenomena and began to ask questions, began to introduce, you know, teach people on how to respond and react to things.